Okay, so um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today for the webinar, Top Ways You Can Set Yourself Apart from Your Competitors and Build Brand Awareness. Um, joining me today is Drew Sherbin. He's the Director of Strategy and Communications from Alchemy Communications. He has a strong background in external communications, notably storytelling, media relations, and crisis communications. Um, this webinar is being recorded, and we will send you a copy of the recording after the presentation. So without further ado, please welcome our speaker today, Drew. Thanks, Anita. And hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, before we get going, um, just going to start off with a quick land acknowledgement that we do with all our presentations. So in the spirit of respect, reciprocity, and truth, Alchemy Communications, as an inhabitant of Calgary, uh, Alberta, honors and acknowledges Mokinstis and the traditional Treaty 7 territory and oral practices of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, as well as the Stony Nakoda and Sutina Nations. We also acknowledge that the territory we work and live upon is home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3 within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. Again, okay, so as Anita mentioned, I'm with Alchemy Communications and just a little bit about us. So we're a full service um, PR communications marketing agency based in Calgary. Uh, we do a lot of different things, work with a lot of different clientele, everywhere from uh, larger you know, oil and gas companies to small entrepreneurs to not-for-profit organizations to associations um, across Canada. Um, so we're not just, uh, our clients aren't just focused in Calgary, but we have um, kind of our our kind of fingers in pots all across the country. So thanks again for joining me today. And we're going to be talking a lot about sort of, as Anita set up, that importance of brand awareness and uh, just providing a few little tips and tricks on how you can differentiate yourself uh, from the competition. Now, some of you are probably doing some of these things and some are kind of new to this world. So towards the end of the presentation, we're going to open it up to um, questions and just comments and a little bit of just sharing to kind of hear about, you know, any questions you may have or some experiences that you've you've had individually in, in sort of navigating um, branding, social media, stuff, stuff like that. So. Without further ado, we're going to hop right into it. So I know we're going to be taking questions um, towards the end, but if you do have any questions uh, during the presentation, you can just throw them in the chat uh, box there. I know Anita is going to be monitoring that. So if at any time you have any questions, you can just throw them in there as well. Um, okay, so let's get started. Okay, so obviously... The reason why you're here, there's there's a there's a need you you understand that there's sort of a need for branding and 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 you want to learn more about it. And the the biggest thing, the first slide I kind of kick this off, is why the need for differentiation, right? So what's why do we need to do this? Obviously, it's a no brainer. Sometimes it's it's all related to, you know, dollars and cents, and you need to uh, create revenue and and get sales and stuff. But there's also it goes deeper than that. So there's a few different ways to um, to kind of uh, understand this. And we're just going to um, kind of kick off with that. And I'm just going to give you sort of a few reasons why. Um, so obviously in today's market, there's, there's saturation. Uh, we're, we're noticing that there's new brands, new businesses uh, emerging daily, and it's a rapid sort of proliferation of, of ways that brands can get lost in the noise. Um, there's ways, obviously, that uh, you can you can do a lot of you know purchasing online. There's different. We're not just kind of competing with our regions anymore or or our cities. It's usually just anyone and everyone is sort of in that space as well. So, without a strong sort of identity, it's 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 even harder to try and kind of break through that noise. So we're going to be looking at sort of. That that market saturation, sort of the the evolving sort of idea of consumer preferences. What are people looking for um, now more than ever? Uh, they're not just looking for a product or an RV. They're looking for an experience, and they're they're looking for almost almost like that relatability as well. So it's not just about you know coming up with fancy graphics or a cool name and logo taglines. It's about really standing out. And I'll be sharing a few little things and ways that you can do that as well. 
And one of the points too, uh, and it's huge, and you're gonna you're gonna hear me reference this a lot, is the word trust. So, in an age where you know people are often skeptical about what they see, and they try and distinguish what is, you know, you, you hear the term fake news. This is that isn't really applicable in terms of our conversation today. But there's this level of skepticism nowadays that people are are just looking. They're they're kind of smart to things, so they're looking to kind of cut through that. And when we can foster that trust, it goes a long way in, in building that brand loyalty as well. So trust sort of in our discussion today and, and for you guys is it's not just about securing that one-time purchase. It's about building that relationship that leads to obviously what we all want is repeat business and that word of mouth referral too, that, that goes a long way. Um, so we'll just be touching on a lot of that as well. Okay. So the next sort of slide that we're, I like to kick off and it kind of sets the stage well is that obviously we all know this and you, you probably more so than I, that the landscape is changing. Uh, landscape in, in all sort of industries is, is changing, but obviously um, in the this industry, in your industry, um, there's things that are changing. There's things that obviously require adaptability um, and I just listed a few of the bullet points here. So obviously there's a rise in the number of, you know, brands and models and everything. I, I've even, in my research of doing this, I was sort of blown away. I'm like, holy smokes. I just remember like RVs or campers of when I was a kid, <laughs> like your Winnebago's or kind of stuff you throw on the back of a truck and that, but now I'm just noticing that there's so much more. So um, in the industry, it's obviously there's there's more, there's unprecedented growth. Uh, we're just seeing a lot of, you know, a boom and in increase in terms of variety of what people can purchase and, and experience. Um, there's different, obviously, levels now, and it's it's really starting to see that there's a there's a surge in that. And what that does is it presents opportunity, but also challenges, right? So when there's more options, obviously, for consumers, it's even more important for the dealers to differentiate um, offerings and service offerings to, to stand out, right? So the second point there is that shifting consumer expectation. So today's buyers, they're more informed now more so than ever, obviously with information, internet, everything, you can do a quick Google search, you can, you can find information on your own. So now that people sort of, they're more informed, they have, you know, different opinions, different priorities, Many are looking for sort of an RV as a way for that flexibility in their options, right? Especially now, sort of the impact of, you know, what we saw with COVID and, and travel restrictions. A lot of people sort of took that as a way to, to explore their own, you know, surroundings as well. So as a result, there's, um, you know, there's different ways of, of things that have came out of that. So what we must do now is just understand that people are, are looking at different ways to travel or there there there's different opportunity for them as well. So as a result we we must sort of be on top of those trends. Um so when we're looking at, you know, talking to our customers, we should be aware of what maybe they're seeing and also maybe sharing messages and information as with as, with them as well. And then finally that last bullet point there is that Obviously, digital, even the way that I'm presenting this today uh, through a Zoom call, and I'm sure there's everyone across the country that are joining me, and it's really with that digital age, it's no different for the consumer. So it's really transformed every industry, and RV market is no exception. Um, usually buyers start their journey with online research. They're looking into you know doing quick Google searches, reading reviews is another huge one. Um, and maybe even taking virtual tours of of prospective things that they're looking to purchase. So with this transformation, it really means that dealers must not only kind of be in that space, but also understand what that is, right? So when you're when you're when you have that strong physical presence, um, you also need a robust digital one as well. Um, so ideas around that are a modern user-friendly website, active social media channels, um, engaging on the the content as well so you know a big thing that we're seeing is that use is user generated content and I'll touch on that in in some of the slides as we get going but 
Um, definitely digital is one of those spaces that you want to um, kind of go part and parcel with when you're building your your kind of um, your physical uh, presence as well. Okay. So as I mentioned before, sort of what, what we see with the rising number and more people kind of being interested is that we're starting to see, obviously, it's competitive, right? Um, I pulled some stats from 2021 in terms of there's just record-breaking numbers in in industry. Um, it's um, according to some of the numbers I pulled that shipments were at an all-time high. Um, the growth just wasn't statistical, but it, in, it, it indicated, as I mentioned before, it's a bit of a cultural shift in how people are perceiving and using um, recreational vehicles and RVs. They're there's obviously reasons around that, but some of them are multifaceted. They're looking at, you know, as we recover from the, the economy coming out of COVID, just there was this desire to sort of domestic travel rather than, you know, uh, when there was lockdowns, you couldn't obviously couldn't go anywhere. But there's what we started to see is that domestic travel options were increasing and just a new demographic that we're starting to entering, starting to enter the market um, contributed to a bit of an uptick in in the uh, the shipments as well. Um, again, back to that digital platform. Um, so now that we're sort of interconnected, that also brings in int an interconnectivity of competitors as well. So as I mentioned before, it's really global now. We're not just, you're not just competing with, um, you know, dealerships locally, but it's also national in some regard. Um, there's different platforms that have emerged, you know, that uh, you can buy direct from manufacturer. Um, there's things that allow consumers to really browse and purchase from anywhere in the world, right? So you don't even have to really kind of do that um, traditional way of, of, you know, connecting and purchasing. So with that increased global competition, it's really made it essential for dealers and dealerships to not only maintain that strong presence, but as I mentioned before, differentiate in that digital space as well. And we'll talk about um, some ways and some quick uh, quick tips and tricks that you can start to implement some of these things. And the final point, sort of, I think everyone sort of, when you see the word pandemic or post-pandemic, it's like almost like a PTSD. It's like, uh. So, what, but what we saw, um, there's definitely a, a surge in, in, in that as well. So, no doubt about it, COVID-19 changed the way things obviously happen worldwide in travel industry and RV industry is no exception at all. So what that is, is that basically people, especially with international travel restrictions, many turned to that, to, to RV industry as a safer way to travel. Um, and that's, we're continuing to see that uh, even after um, the pandemic and things like that. So obviously by doing so, it offers a unique advantage by combining transportation accommodations, but also giving that, you know, there's, there's flexibility in, around that, especially around safety. Um, so, you know, you know, as borders closed and flights were canceled, that domestic road trip really became that go-to vacation for many. Um, and we're starting to really see that, that continuation of that. So as I mentioned before, more people are, are continuing that or, 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 and are even discovering this sort of newfound love for that, this type of lifestyle, right? Okay. So really jumping into, I set, set, sort of set the stage for the, the market impact and kind of what we're seeing and, you know, the reason people are, are entering the market or kind of continuing with, with the market as well. But now we're going to really jump into the why we're all really here is to talk about the brand awareness and the impact. So when we talk about brand awareness, first and foremost, high brand recognition correlates directly to market share and then also dir directly then relates to sales, right? So when we're talking about the world of business um, and this industry is no exception, visibility is really everything. So when companies or dealerships have su has successfully positioned their brand in the public, they often enjoy a larger piece of the market pie, uh, let's call it. So if you think about some of the biggest brands globally, and it doesn't have to be in in the in the RV industry, but just everything and anything, when you think of you sort of, there's a few, if you just rattle off, you know, if you think of like, say, pop, you'll think Coke, Pepsi, whatever, right? Larger ones, obviously, they, they differentiated themselves and they're huge players in that game. But there's no reason why when you're looking at your own industry, 
you can be part of that 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 puzzle as well. And I'm not, not saying we're all I'm not going to give you things to be global players in here, but what it'll do is it'll sort of in your own market, it'll 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 give you ways to sort of set yourselves apart in your industry as well. So the second bullet point there is that that trust word again. So 83% of people trust recommendations from family and friends. So as I mentioned before, with that word of mouth, um, that continues to be one of the most important and potent marketing tools, even in a digital age. Um, according to Nielsen, you know, as I mentioned, that 83% of the consumers, they place their trust in recommendations when they receive them from people they know personally. And there's no reason why you can't set yourself up to get to know those people on a personal level. So when you start to kind of engage and you're not just, you know, you know, pushing a one-way message, but if you're bringing them into the conversation with your dealership, you're, you're creating that relationship. You're, you're, you're becoming a, a friend to them. Right. And that, that trust is, is starting, starting to build. And we'll talk uh, more about that in, in my slides as we get going, but for RV dealerships, it really, as I mentioned before, it really means that every every sale is really an opportunity to create that new member of the family, let's call it, right? Or a brand ambassador. Um, so when you're looking at things like top tier service, honest dealings, quality products, it transforms that one-time customer into that lifelong advocate. So that's where we start to see this word of mouth. So all these things relate into the brand and the brand awareness and the impact. And then ultimately what you want to, I guess the goal of everyone here is when you're, you're, it's that first name that comes to mind when, when someone is thinking of that. So that's what goes back to that thing, what I said about Coke and Pepsi, right? So being that top of mind and the power of top of mind awareness, it can't be understated. It's, it's why brands are successful. That's, that's one of the reasons why is that top of mind. So if you can sort of set yourselves apart um, from other competitors, if you can, you know, come up with things that are, if it, if it's you know top quality service that is your 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 hallmark, and that's the brand awareness and the first thing that triggers, then build on those. If it's if it's you know high quality, obviously you, you build on that. So it's it's about relating things to people and be giving them sort of that, that top of mind awareness that, so when, if they're considering purchasing an RV, you're, it's like immediately you're, they're kind of thinking of that. Okay. So hopping into the next slide about what we're going to be taking away from today is we're going to be talking about, you know, crafting an RV brand that resonates um, and a dealer brand that resonates content that captivates and informs mastering social media in the context of your industry, establishing a compelling digital presence. And the last point there is prioritizing the customer experience. So when we look at all those points, sort of the biggest thing is that going back to sort of what we're looking at is that the modern consumer now and customer, they're inundated with content everywhere. So advertising, news, social media, you're getting ads on your phone, you're getting ads on your computer, da, da, da. Everywhere they look, there's something <laughs> that they're being blasted with, right? So when we understand that, um, to really stand out, the content must not only capture the attention, but it mu must provide value. We're getting to a point now, and as I mentioned before, that that sort of that education of the consumer is that they need to see something or it needs to resonate with them and it needs to be valuable to them. So if you're getting an ad on something and say, well, why do I want this. Um, sometimes you see that it, the targeting is wrong and they don't even need it. But if if they're getting something where it's, it's like, okay, I'll continue reading, but there needs to be that value sort of proposition, right? So in this sort of realm, that might be, mean sharing, you know, destinations that they can get to, obviously, with the purchase of a RV from your dealership, right? So it's not just about, yeah, check out this new model or check out this. It's about, you know, giving them something. So travel destinations, um, tips on, you know, if they're currently already in that maintenance tips, um, providing insights into latest technologies that you're seeing, stuff like that. So it's not about just pushing out ads or or sales driven things. It's about really engaging content. And we'll we'll get into that as we go along as well. So the first 
sort of point there um, when we're talking about crafting the brand is looking at sort of your your dealership and who you are and crafting that unique identity. So emphasize what sets you apart, all right? So as I mentioned before, in a market that's really saturated with similar products, services, this is key. Differentiation is the key. So buyers need a compelling reason to choose you over the other. So what what is that? So whether it could be things like uh, superior quality, innovative features, except, exceptional service, or even a unique story. It could be a unique story of your brand, of your dealership, of, of management, of ownership, of whatever that is. So it's crucial to identify and communicate what makes you unique, right? So whatever that may be, really identify that and build upon that. So when you do that, you're clearly highlighting the selling proper, the unique selling propositions or the USPs, right? So when you're looking at that, that should be sort of forefront of all your marketing and branding efforts is what's the, the uniqueness of it. So what sets you apart and what makes it easier for the customer to really understand that proposition? So when, when you can, when you can kind of lay that out, make them understand what that is, it increases the likelihood of them choosing you or even, even, you know, that could be just by, and by choosing, I mean, maybe it could be the, a phone call or an email or they show up one day, but they're, they're, they're taking that step to choose you over other, uh, other competitors. The second bullet point, and this kind of goes back into that cr creating and crafting that identity is that infused with sort of the local culture and community and the spirit of that, of your branding. So it's really important to like identify and understand who your, your community is um, and authenticity in that is huge. So one way that you can achieve that is, as I mentioned before, tapping into that local culture of your community and the community spirit. What this really does is it adds a layer of relatability. And I, again, that T word, that trust. And it shows then you're more than just a business. It's you're part of the community. You're talking with the community, right? So whether it's communicate or incorporating, you know, local landmarks or local things into your into your designs or your 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 brand, um, you can do that. You know, collaborating with local artist people, celebrating local festivals or traditions, like really just bringing things in um, that are connecting with the community as well. So when you do this, what it does is it resonates with the community, and it, as I mentioned before, it sort of sets you apart from being seen as a business, right? You're, you're part of the community. You take pride of, of being part of that community and you're, you're working, you're amongst the customers. You're, you're, you're building that, that pride and that sense of belonging uh, within the community. And then the last point there on this one, when we're talking about looking at that identity and building that identity is that um, it, it's essentially community engagement. So community engagement is, is a huge, powerful tool when it comes to brand building. Sometimes we think, oh, I just need to have a really cool logo or a awesome ad or a great tagline, but I would not kind of discredit or, or push aside the idea of community. When you look at maybe you're organizing um, events or joining local events, what that does is it really gives you the opportunity to directly interact and meet your customers and your audience. So. When you're, when you're seen as part of the community out in these events, um, not only are you interacting, but it also gives you opportunity to give sort of gather that feedback, build the meaningful relationships. As I mentioned before, you're kind of inviting them in um, and, and just, yeah, like cultivating um, that relationship. And you're, again, creating sort of that ambassador for your, for your organization and your company. So a few things that you could do is, you know, you could be in the form of, of, you know, RV showcases or different events. You could do things like workshops around maintenance um, or even like casual, if you're building really into the lifestyle, you could do like casual campfire chats for RV enthusiasts, right? And host one at a park or something like that. So the events not only position your brand, but they're, they're showing that you're connected. So in your, in your, you're active as an industry player, but it gives you that direct insight into what people are talking about, what they want, sort of the preferences of your target audience. So when you're when you're looking at sort of those community events, not only is it 
it's fun. I mean, it's a lot of work, but the the payoff is is great. But it it underscores that commitment to to saying to your customers and your audience that it's more than just profit. They're more than just you know a, a customer. They're 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 part of this, right? You're building that community. So you when you're demonstrating sort of that genuine interest. It goes a long way in that T word, the trust, and then building that growth of the community. Um, so when you're you're kind of building that community, there's opportunity to to reach people that are that will become part of that uh, RV community as well. So with that being said, it's a good segue into in terms of when we're talking about maybe building, you know, getting new people involved, engage the enthusiasts, right? So there's a huge resource that's already there right that are that are tapped in that have that are with you and and obviously different levels of kind of where they're at in terms of the the purchasing journey and maybe some have been rv enthusiasts for years and some are just getting into it but when we look at that sort of that market and that target you really want to engage your current base right they're they're you're almost you're built in ambassadors already so when we look at ways to do this a few little bullet points here uh, we can touch on is that the first one there is you could share inspirational travel stories. So engage your, your customer base and hear these stories. So when we talk about travel, it's often about, and I would argue it's probably more so about the experience, right? The memories, the stories that you gather along the way. Um, when you're looking at that and you're, you're, you're cultivating those stories, RV and RVing, it, it, it creates tales, travel stories, right? Like everyone has a story maybe of when they, even when I hopped on and what I, my first experience is of just like a old camper my grandpa had on the back of his truck. Like it's, it's things like that resonate with people. So when you tap into the the essence of that and really a reason why maybe people choose that lifestyle or, you know, there's, you always hear of the, like even like an example in the slide, they're probably traveling across the country, right? Enjoying their retirement. We'll tap into that, build on those stories. So what these stories do is they resonate, right? They resonate deeply with both, you know, the seasoned RVer or the one they resonate with maybe those considering of getting into that. So when you're looking at those, what those tales really do is they create that emotional connection. It shows your potential customers that the kinds of experiences that they're they're wanting is that it's just around the bend or it's just down the road. It's, it awaits them if you choose, right? Like obviously you're, you're, they, you want to them to purchase from you, but you want to be chosen in that regard. There we go. I got a comment in here. I, I ripped an awning off a motorhome. <laughs> so there you go. There's like, I bet you everyone has a story, right. Or, or something they've seen and uh, resonate with. So and then the second point there, what you can do, and more so maybe of those those people that are engaged already, is that you know owning an RV is a is a huge investment. It's significant, so naturally owners want to ensure that their purchase and their their sort of their investment, they want to ensure that it remains in top condition. So if we can provide you know valuable tips around maintenance, it helps you position not only as you're you're you were with them when they came to purchase initially, but you're, you're with them as they continue to, to go down that road, right? So when you're positioning your brand as being helpful and not just, we'll take your money, see you later, it goes a long way. So a few of these ways that you can do this, so they can range from like basic routines to more in-depth guides. You can do a series of videos, things like that, that could be on your website. Um, things like you know, if you create a monthly newsletter, you could send out, you know, monthly tips around different things like seasonal challenges or technical issues, things like that. So it not only empowers the owners um, with the knowledge, but again, it fosters that trust. It shows that you genuinely care about the longevity of, of their investment and their purchase, right? So when you do that, in a roundabout way, it leads to maybe that increased around what I was mentioning before that after sales engagement. So when customers are engaged and they're, you know, they're getting your updates or they're, they're, they're with you, um, they're more likely to return to you for, you know, if they need parts or services, they're, they're, they're going to be connecting with you. If they're watching your video or tips and you say, you know, 
check this out or you need to get this part, they'll be coming more than likely coming to you because that trust is there. They're, they, they're trusting you because they, they've seen that information, right? And then the final bullet point around the, um, around this, around engaging the enthusiasts is celebrate the content. You know, user generated, user generated content is one of the most authentic ways to, to really for a brand to get endorsements, right? So when we're talking about reviews or, or people sharing their experiences, that's coming from them. That's not coming from you. That's not coming from a guy like me, um, writing, you know, marketing a brand language. It's, it's celebrated by the community. So when you're encouraging sort of those personal stories, um, you know, share your memorable moments, uh, share videos captured on camera, it's coming from the community, right? And it goes a long way to sort of boost that, that brand awareness. Um, if you were asking, they're, they're sharing and it's sort of under that umbrella of your brand. And again, what it does creates that sense of community. It's just not about a buying something it's about you're you're part of it right so your customers feel valued they feel heard they're building a bond they're building a bond with with the dealership with the person who sold right so you're they're they're creating that and again when you do that it's more than likely for them to become repeat customers and advocates which is which is what we all all want to see so this next slide sort of goes beyond um i mean we all have websites or you should all have websites and and social media sort of different levels of engagement of what we're doing on social but it's really about making it going beyond just a digital showcase right so it's beyond just selling things online or or you know people can browse through things it's 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 becoming more than that and sort of what i mentioned about the um enhanced digital sort of landscape what we're starting to see is that your website obviously is about that first point of contact, but the biggest thing is just ensuring that it's really optimized for different searches. So I could spend an, a whole session on talking about search engine optimization or SEO. Some people may have heard that term. And basically what that is, is, is when you have a website, sort of Google kind of scans everything and they look for common terms that people are searching. So if you're do you have terms that sort of when you're looking at research, researching your audience and you're coming up with sort of things that people are searching, if you have those on your website, it's more likely to be to be picked up by Google. And then we all notice on Google, there's different rankings of things. So if you're more sort of like looking at that and being aware of that, um, it's more than likely to be discovered by those searching for, you know, RV related information, products, services. That being said, though, uh, when we're looking at optimizing the website, it's not just about rankings. It's about delivering a, a user experience. Um, you know, when you're looking at a website, it's about being responsive. Can you search? Can you view it well on your phone? Things like that. So when you invest in in really beefing up your website or your online offering, it really, really what it does, it ensures that your content is updated and relevant. And it just improves that user experience, which again, goes back to that trust. So if someone's looking at your site and saying, wow, this is super fast. I'm finding all everything I need. I, I like these guys, right? So things like that. So when we get down to the second point, we've kind of looked at the, okay, our website is optimized where we have it. Well, what can we add? What can we do to sort of set us apart? So different things that you can add there is you could do different things like, interactive features such as like virtual tours or um you know some of you may have heard the term chatbot so that little thing on the usually it's the bottom right that pops up and says how may i help you and it's um i have a kind of a differing opinion on that i think the the human experience and human touch is always great but sometimes if you want to rely and kind of kind of lean on that ai technology um there's ways to do that and then there's also ways you don't want to fully lean on it because then what that can do sometimes is it erodes the trust it's like okay they they're, they're not really talking to me it's just some robot so just be mindful of that sometimes when you're looking at maybe um bringing that in because what it does is is it it's good for resourcing and efficiency um but sometimes it can be a, it's almost like a double-edged sword sometimes 
So when we're looking at sort of today's consumer, uh, as I mentioned before, they're expecting more than just information on a website, right? They're, they're seeking that engagement, that interactivity, that that building of a bond and that building of the trust. So what tours can do is it, it provides that sort of immersive experience and it shows the potential customer that, you know, there's things to explore. There's things to look beyond just seeing a picture on a website. Um, not only does it showcase features, but it creates sort of that it's, it's the first step in building that memorable experience, right? It's saying, Hey, I can picture myself and my family in that, or, Hey, I, that's exactly what, how we would be using this or things like that. So it just goes a lot, a lot more beyond the, um, that static image. Right. And then again, just kind of a mention of that, the chat bot, um, idea is that it provides sort of instant answers to queries sometimes, and it guides people. But what it does is it ensures that the visitor, it shows that they're supported, even though that someone might know it's a it's a chat bot or a robot or AI. The, the fact that you have it there, and maybe it's a simple question that can be answered, um, it goes a long way as well. And then finally, the last point around um, just having a, a great website or a digital presence is stay connected. So it's one thing for people to visit your website, but get them sort of engaged in the sort of when we talk about things like call to action, like get them to sign up for for your newsletter or stay updated on latest trends and um, technologies or, or maintenance tips. So when you're maintaining and building that connection, it increases that brand loyalty. And it, and again, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but it's it's a long way. It goes a long way in in creating that repeat business. So when there's regular newsletters, regular updates, and you're providing them with something. So I'm not saying just spam the heck out of people, but the content that you're providing should be, it goes back to sort of those, um, those a few, few slides that I talked about before about that uniqueness of your brand or engaging the enthusiasts. You want to be giving them stuff that they see is still valuable. So things like the maintenance tips or new features or uh, sharing stories from customers or what you've heard or sharing stories from, you know, um, from the shop or whatever it is, when you're creating those things, you're building on that, that added value commitment. So you're, you're, you're with them even post-purchase, right? So it's, it's, it could be things that, you know, updating on destinations, updating on, you know, community meetup events, different, different features, different things that are engaging and exciting the community for the next next step, right? So when we talk about sort of, you know, we're engaging our audiences, connecting with consumers, connecting with cu current customers, potential customers, repeat customers, it's really about creating that ambassador. I mentioned it before, it's about building that RV ambassador, we'll call them. So what does that look like? So when we're, when we're kind of going along the journey, okay, they, they've, they've, they purchased the journey doesn't end there in fact it, it's really it really begins there right so when we're talking about that post purchase phase it's crucial in sort of cementing that customer loyalty and ensuring that satisfaction so a few ways that we can do that is that tailor that experience right tailor the check-ins whether it's via phone email uh, even personalized cards um it shows customers that you care about their experience and you're committed to really ensuring that they get the most out of their investment right it's not just about okay we purchased you're done um it's it's continuing that journey and um that being said it's it's also giving them it's not saying just send a, a card it's 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 giving them value okay well what yeah i i bought your my rv but why do you keep sending me this stuff it has to be sort of resonating with them as well so the caveat to that is just connecting on that level, but giving them something to digest and something useful. Um, and then some people might even, they're like, holy smokes, they sent me a card that they care, right? <laughs> Depending on the audience, uh, it could go a long way. So when you're looking at these sort of regular check-ins and these ways to improve, it's um, not only builds that relationship, but it gives you a chance to, you know, get feedback, address any concerns, you're understanding areas of ways that maybe you can improve as a dealer. Um, and it allows, what it does is it allows your brand to evolve. 
Um, so part of that brand awareness is evolution and evolving to what your customers and your customer base wants. Um, you know, there's things like rewards and referral programs, things like that. Some people may be doing this. Some people may not be. But it's always a good way to recognize that customer for loyalty. So it, what that does is it fosters a deeper bond. Um, it kind of brings that customer along for the ride. And it makes them more likely to, to, to continue that association with your with your dealership, right? And they become that advocate, that ambassador. Um, it, it goes back to that word of mouth. What that does is it really, beyond obviously, you know, direct benefits, um, you know, maybe increased sales or, or increased customer base, it makes customers feel valued and it really makes them feel appreciated. It furthers that trust and it it strengthen, strengthens that brand loyalty. So another way you could do that is around, as I mentioned before, that community engagement side of things. So host community engagement events, um, as mentioned, it's invaluable when we're, when we're talking about establishing or, or enhancing that brand. You're more than just a business, right? I think you'd all sort of agree with that. It's, it's, it's more than that, but it's, it's a huge integral part of, of being part of the local community, right? So when you're hosting things, you're sponsoring different events, um, you know, workshops, community festivals, drives, it showcases your brand's commitment to not only the community, but also if you're doing more things that are engaged to that lifestyle, you're you're committed to that. It's, it's showing that you're part of that as well. It positions you as a leader and a participant as well in, in the community. Okay, so when we talk about sort of where we've backtracked, we we have a really good website. We're sending out great tips on, you know, maintenance, things like that. We have our ambassadors. We're, we're humming along. What does that mean? Well, that means that back to that point of what I said around evolution is that you should be, always be looking at and understanding the changing trends and adaptability is huge. So like any other industry, you're, you're, the, there's things are, you're, you're no different. You're subject to change. There's changing trends. There's changing technologies. There's shifts in consumer behaviors. There's external factors, right? There's different things that obviously happen at maybe, you know, governments when we're talking about COVID and things like that, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that can impact the, the trends or the economic conditions. So, when we're staying informed about these trends, it allows us to really adapt and get that information out to our consumers first, right? So sometimes when you can be sending that out there, it builds that trust again. It's like, holy smokes, they let me know about this, this trend or this, these things that are might impact me. I appreciate it, right? So when you're looking at sort of, of how to navigate that what it does is it allows you to sort of adapt different when we're talking about marketing you could adapt your marketing strategies you could adapt maybe your your even product lines in some regards of if you're noticing a certain shift in markets in um, in your own area you can look at different ways to engage as well and then ultimately just meeting the consumer's needs what what do they need another way of that is that you know, regularly survey customers, seek their feedback. Direct feedback is one of the most valuable resources for any business. Um, it offers insights into what's working, what's not working, where you can improve. Um, I mean, you're always going to get the crankies, the people and maybe leave you a, a crappy Google review or, or whatever. Um, one of the worst things you can do is be focused on sort of that negativity sometimes. I always liken it to a thing if you have like, okay, you have 100 people and you have 10 people complaining. Oftentimes you see organizations are, um, and this can go in all industries, is they focus so much on making those 10 people happy, which is important, but sometimes they ignore those other 90, right? And when you're putting all your energy on these people that, let's face it, may always, no matter what you say, it's they're always going to be grumpy or, or whatever, you're sort of, you're ignoring that your, your, those 90 or that percentage of your base that are your ambassadors that really, that really should be cared for more than the squeaky wheels. Right. So that's just one thing to keep in mind as well. So when we're looking at regular surveys, not only it, it helps track 
customer satisfaction, but it gives you sort of a gauge in maybe when we're looking at future planning or, you know, what products to bring in, what inventory to bring in. It can kind of help you gauge that uh, around what people want, new new services, new products. It's It goes beyond just collecting maybe feedback or being ready to respond to a negative review. It It demonstrates that you're sort of that commitment to that evolution and that adaptability as well. The third point there is monitor competitors, look at what other people are doing and adapt faster. So sort of when we're looking at competitive analysis, it's crucial in any industry. It allows brands to understand sort of where they are in the market. It identifies the unique, that USP, that unique selling proposition. And it also, what it does is it recognizes sort of the industry benchmarks. So Yes, we're competitors, but they're, you're also you're playing in the same space. So it's almost about looking. Okay, what what are people doing? What are those trends? What are the benchmarks? Where can can we exceed that? Are we in a position to do that? Well, the, let's explore that. So it's about monitoring co competitors, um, and it's not about just imitating and saying, okay, the other guys are doing this, let's do that. It's about understanding the landscape of where you're at, identifying maybe the gaps. It, well, maybe one competitor is really good at this and they're they're not as good as that well maybe you can kind of swoop in and and be seen as the leader in that area and it's all about leveraging leverage is a huge term leveraging opportunities leverage leveraging feedback leveraging you know even negative negative feedback it's an opportunity to to grow so when you have the ability to adapt faster it gives your brand, so when we're talking in the context of branding, it gives a significant advantage. It, it it shows that you're sort of one step ahead of that. So when you're offering maybe those tips or those innovative solutions to the to the customer or the consumer, you are creating that trust again. You're 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 showing that you're you know you're doing your homework too. You're researching this stuff so they don't have to. And you're capturing that new market or you're increasing those new market segments as well. So when you're addressing your consumer needs, you're you're helping them along the way. And the final point here around staying ahead in the market is look at inv investing in continuous training and development. So the industry is dynamic by nature. It means there's technologies and products and things that are coming, you know, at a record pace sometimes. So when you understand and you're training and you're aware of these when you can answer those questions that consumers have, it shows that not only are you knowledgeable and skilled, but it improves that quality of the interaction as well. Um, it builds on the, the service provided. It, it it boosts morale, not only from consumers and customers, but also employees and, and confidence, right? If they're if they're up to speed on the latest trends technologies, there's it almost leads to uh, a higher job satisfaction there there's better customer interactions when they're able to answer those questions and this all relates back to your brand so if you flip it and you're not training or you're not investing in sort of being aware of the technologies and and someone comes to you or your dealership and they didn't get the answer or they someone said oh, i don't know about that they'll leave, right? Or they'll go to someone who is doing that. So it's, it's again, it's about staying ahead and understanding where people are, are at in their journey as well. Okay. So when we look at sort of trends and what we can navigate and understand, one of the big things that even I saw when I was doing research is, is that a lot of people are sort of they're latching onto this idea of eco-friendly. I'm not saying it's like completely, we want electric RVs and I'm not going to buy anything like this or whatever, but it's definitely an area that the, 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 the industry is starting to see. Um, and RV industry is no exception either. Right. So when we look at sort of the modern RV enthusiasts, they're seeking ways to really combine their love of travel with, responsible environmental footprints. So this sort of goes back to that, what I was saying about understanding trends and embracing that. Um, so when we're looking that, at that, it's how do we sort of capture that market segment, but also provide them with the knowledge about forward thinking, right? And, and what does that mean for our current base who's just doesn't care about that stuff, just wants that, right? What they've always known or, or whatever, could care less about it, right? 
So it's not about just, you know, catering to one side of the market or the segment, but it's how can we integrate? So these are just a few different tips and ways that maybe we could do that. So if you're looking at sustainable technologies or even, even just your dealership, uh, the building could be sustainable, right? Or, or, and it, again, it, what I was saying before, it goes to understanding your, your community, your audience. If your audience is, if you're in a, a, a part of the country or, of um, a, you know, a, a segment that is more, doesn't really care about that, then sometimes if you do that, it could be, it could, I wouldn't say negative, but there, there could be some backlashes or things like that, that questions that you might get that you're not really prepared to answer, but it's about understanding your community as well. So if you look at sort of the third point there around ecotourism, um, you know, promoting environmentally responsible travel, things like that, that could be around things that you send out, you know, um, in your newsletters or content on your website, or maybe that's, you identify that as an area where you can be a leader, right? So maybe that's something that you, you latch on. Um, you could offer guides around responsible travel, you know, things like adhering to campsite regulations, um, the leaving no trace uh, idea campaign, or just highlighting when we talked about maybe destinations, highlighting eco-friendly destinations or things that resonate with that audience that you've identified. So not only does it appeal to maybe people that are in that, but it also what it does is it it builds that trust with other organizations as well. So maybe other tourism organizations or it, it opens the door for potential collaboration with different groups as well. So that kind of lends well into that the final bullet about partnering, right? So partnering can go, it sort of goes back to that idea of the community engagement. So you're partnering with your community, your, your local organizations, whether it's through sponsoring events or sponsoring things, right? Different, you might have a rink, rink board ad on your community arena, stuff like that. But what it does when you, if you can spark, sponsor or partner with sustainable brands, if that's your bucket that you want to ta tackle and kind of take on it it builds that that commitment to the to the brand loyalty right so when you're you're partnering with people you're kind of taking on the power of that organization as well 